In our series of dental anatomy so far, we have discussed in detail about the anatomy of anterior teeth that is the permanent maxillary and the mandibular incisors and canines. Starting from this video, we will be dealing with the dental anatomy of the posterior teeth. Starting with the permanent maxillary first premolar, since the anatomy is a detailed one, in this video we will be particularly focusing on the buccal and the lingual aspect of this tooth. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Dentorize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. The premolars are so named because they are anterior to the molars in the permanent dentition. They are the ones which succeed the deciduous molars. The premolars are also called as bicuspids because they have two cusps. However, this term is misleading. Why? We will discuss this while dealing with the anatomy of mandibular premolars. According to the FDI tooth notation system, the right permanent maxillary first premolar is numbered as 1-4 and the left permanent maxillary first premolar is numbered as 2-4. The dental anatomy of permanent maxillary first premolar can be studied under five headings. These are the buccal aspect, the lingual aspect, the mesial aspect, the distal aspect and the occlusal aspect. In this video, we will be focusing on the buccal and the lingual aspect. The remaining aspects will be discussed in our subsequent videos. Starting with the buccal aspect first, considering the first heading that is the dimension, the cervico-occlusal length that is the length from the tip of the cusp to the highest point in the cervical line is 8.5 mm, while the length of the root that is the length from the highest point in the cervical line till the apex of the root is 14 mm. The mesodistal dimensions at the crest of contour of this tooth is 7 mm, while the mesodistal dimensions at the cervix is 5 mm. The second heading under the buccal aspect is the overall shape of the crown. From the buccal aspect, the crown is roughly trapezoidal in shape as you can see in the figure. The third heading under the buccal aspect is the overall surface of the crown. The buccal surface of the crown is convex. However, it shows a strong development of the middle buccal lobe in the form of a continuous ridge that starts from the cusp tip till the cervical margin and this ridge is called as the buccal ridge. You can observe in the figure the line marked in red represents the buccal ridge. Mesial and distal to this buccal ridge on the occlusal third of the crown, few developmental depressions can also be seen. The fourth heading under the buccal aspect would be the outlines. Let's discuss about the mesial outline. Starting from the cervical line and then moving down occlusally, the mesial outline is slightly concave from the cervical line to the mesial contact area marked in the figure in green. The mesial contact area is not a point, rather it is represented by a broad curvature as you can see in the figure in red. However, the crest of contact area lies immediately occlusal to a point which is halfway between the tip of the cusp and the cervical line. Please observe the figure very carefully. If we discuss about the distal outline starting from the cervical line and then moving down occlusally, the distal outline of the crown below the cervical line is also concave. However, the extent of concavity is less as compared to that of the mesial outline. The distal contact area is represented by a broader curvature than that found mesially. The crest of curvature of this distal contact area tends to be a little more occlusal with the tooth post with its long axis vertical. You can observe the difference in the levels of the contact areas in the figure. Now from the buccal aspect we can observe a cusp. This cusp has two slopes. The slope on the mesial side is called as the mesial slope and the slope on the distal side is called as the distal slope. The mesial slope of a permanent maxillary first premolar is greater in length as compared to that of the distal slope. This is in contrast to that of a permanent maxillary canine wherein the mesial slope is shorter in dimension as compared to the distal slope. If we talk about permanent maxillary first premolar, the mesial slope is straight while the distal slope is curved. This is very well evident in the figure. If we talk about the cusp that is seen from the buccal aspect of the crown, we would observe that the tip of this cusp is pointed. Also, 
This tip is present distal to the line by setting the buckle surface of the crown. Please observe the figure very carefully. After the crown, if we talk about the root, the cervical line of a permanent maxillary first premolar has less curvature. However, the crest of curvature of this cervical line buccally is near the center of the root buccally. Please observe the figure very carefully. The outline of the buccal portion of the root bears a close resemblance with that of the maxillary canine. The apex of the root is pointed. Now let's discuss about the lingual aspect. When we rotate the tooth from the buccal aspect towards the lingual aspect, we observe that another cusp of shorter length is present on the lingual aspect. This implies a permanent maxillary first premolar has two cusps. The cusp present towards the buccal side is called as the buccal cusp and the cusp present towards the lingual side is called as the lingual cusp. The first heading under the lingual aspect is the outline of the tooth from this aspect. The gross outline of a permanent maxillary first premolar from the lingual aspect is reverse of that of the outline from the buccal aspect. Now, as we have already discussed, a permanent maxillary first premolar has two cusps. The one present on the buccal side is called as the buccal cusp and the one present on the lingual side is called as the lingual cusp. There are certain peculiarities of this lingual cusp which helps us to differentiate between a permanent maxillary first premolar from that of a permanent maxillary second premolar. The lingual cusp in a permanent maxillary first premolar is shorter in length than that of the buccal cusp. This makes it possible to see the tips of both the buccal and the lingual cusp from the lingual aspect. This is in contrast to that of the permanent maxillary second premolar wherein the length of the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp is same. Also in a permanent maxillary first premolar the lingual cusp is narrower mesodistally than that of the buccal cusp. This implies the crown tapers towards the lingual side. This is very well evident with the help of red arrow marked in the figure. Therefore, it is possible to see a part of the mesial and distal surface of the crown and the root from this aspect in a permanent maxillary first premolar. If we talk about the surface of the lingual cusp, it is smooth, spheroidal and convex. Also, while moving the explorer on the lingual surface, lingual ridge can very well be appreciated. If we talk about the tip of the lingual cusp, it is pointed. The slopes of the lingual cusp, that is the mesial slope and the distal slope, meet at the tip of the cusp at an angle of 90 degrees. If we talk about the mesial and the distal outlines of the lingual cusp, starting from the cervical line and then moving down occlusally, both the outlines are straight from the cervical line marked in the figure in green, then they turn convex marked in the figure in red and then they become continuous with the mesial slope and the distal slope of the lingual cusp marked in the figure in blue. After the crown on the lingual aspect, if we talk about the cervical line, the cervical line has a slight curvature towards the root with crest of curvature centered on the root. The root is smooth and convex at all the points and the apex from the lingual aspect is blunt. In this video, we dealt with the buccal and the lingual aspect of a permanent maxillary first premolar under the following headings. The dimensions, the shape of the crown, the surface of the crown, the mesial and the distal outlines of the crown, the tip of the cusp, the slopes of the cusp, the cervical line, the root, the apex of the root. In our subsequent videos, we will be dealing with the remaining aspects of this tooth and other posterior teeth. If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Thank you for watching.